Hello and welcome to the Womb Centered Healing Podcast. I'm Sama Morningstar and I'm so glad to have Claire Galloway with me here. Hi. Um, Hi. <laughs> I always love uh, coming together with you, Claire. We just yeah. feels like our mutual inspiration is very full and nourishing yeah. both for us and for listeners. So it's a real treat to have you here today. Um, we were just talking about, before we got started, about how this situation of the global response to the, mm -hmm. the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, mm -hmm. most nations in some degree of quarantine mm -hmm. and lockdown mm -hmm. and shutdown of all normal mm -hmm. things, right? All the unessential businesses are shut down. People are being told to stay home. And for many of us who have been listening to our inner guidance and made that practice to reconnect with that inner guidance, which is something that's core to the teachings of the womb centered healing temple, centering that listening inner guidance mm -hmm. in the womb space. And I know this is something that you practice and that we mm -hmm. know each other in that practice in some of my community. Mm -hmm. And I know that in your community that you speak to that inner listening a lot. And mm -hmm. both been in this practice for quite a number of years and we're connected with others that also have been in this practice. And we surround ourselves with people who've been in this practice because what that creates is a readiness and that things, mm. although they may be surprising, they're not really a, that big of a surprise. Yeah. I've heard it yeah, myself. I've heard it from you. I've heard others, other practitioners like this of saying, oh, this is what I've been preparing for all these years. I didn't know it was going to look exactly like this, but I've been preparing for this moment. Yeah these years and I'd been listening to inner guidance telling me to go in this direction. I didn't know why I had yeah. idea why for me, I thought it was because I wasn't going to be able to keep doing massage, even though my approach to massage therapy is very nourishing for my body. So I don't burn out as like many people mm -hmm. and I am somehow still able to continue carrying on. I thought maybe I wouldn't be, well, guess what? The place I was just closed down and I'm not doing it anymore, right? So it was another, a different reason why now I'm not doing massage. And I have luckily built these systems and structures to do online teaching and healing work yeah. over them. And that takes some time to set up, yeah. I know you, know, yes. you know, and to like learn how I'm going to do it feels good to me and learn how to get the word out about it and how to reach the people that be of service to and all of those aspects of it take time to develop and get in alignment with and you got to try lots of different things at least my experience you yeah. know it's gonna work or that yeah. can work I don't know and talk to lots of different people and build your network right that takes years right and people who weren't receiving that guidance to do that or maybe they were yeah. listening to it didn't necessarily, aren't necessarily arriving at that moment. They might still be, you know, they might be having more of a disruptive experience. Yes. And I, what I really feel is that this, this virus is sort of a reset or a realignment of like what's actually healthy for us. Yes. We're really yes, being asked to feel that and explore that yes. ourselves. And so I would love to hear your insights about this uh, for mm. feeling like, oh, wow, I've been preparing for this for years yeah. and didn't even realize it and, um, and what that looks like for you. Yeah, and just like you're saying, that sense of, um, oh, right, I can really do this. Like the first, the first biggest sort of insight that came to me, I've been getting these, like, a lot of downloads, a lot of waves of awareness sort of days of, of chaos and then days of absolute crystal clarity like I've never had such crystal clarity in my life like and like the real gift of the collective consciousness now um but in those waves like it, the first realization I had was 
I knew this was coming. I knew something like it was coming. Like you say, I, I didn't know exactly how it would unfold, but it's so obvious that at some point it was just all going to like just grind to a halt because it is what we've been doing for so long is completely unsustainable. And people don't seem to get that term, what unsustainable means. It means it can't go on. It means <laughs> it will stop because yeah. it'll burn itself out or it'll stop giving life, like it'll come away from life. And this is such a beautiful example. It's like a, a guy in um, global environmental disaster inside of us. And that's ultimately like if we thought that we were going to just sit in our little houses and watch movies on TV and watch the world crumble around us and we were going to be immune to it and it wasn't going to affect us, you know, or it's just icebergs melting or it's just polar bears dying or whatever, you know, it's just monkeys in a jungle somewhere. It doesn't mean anything to me or people on a distant continent having storms affect their villages, you know, whatever, hard luck. But, you know, we thought we could just stay in our, with our lots of toilet rolls and <laughs> full fridges and, and you know, this, uh, this like loads of shit around us, like loads of stuff around us, just stuff. And we thought that that gave us this immunity, but of course the immunity is, that's not the immunity. <laughs> the immunity is something is to do with our actual real relationship with outside like our actual tangible daily marriage to outside, like it's a symbiotic relationship. And even the fact that we talk about this disease as something terrible and outside of us and something we're trying to hide from and escape from, it's, it's human. It's a human disease. It's being passed around us at an incredible rate. And it's not that different to things that we've dealt with before and pandemics that we've had before. And at this point in life, like we have a, which I really feel like one of my really strong purposes in all of this, um, is like this is the time where we have to actually make a transition. Like we've reached a certain point with medicine, we've reached a certain point with non-sovereignty, with, with removing ourselves from the world and from our power, from our responsibility. Like we've got all these layers of agency outside of us, which we go to to get our power, to get our energy, to get our food, to get our education, to get our medication. But now we're at a time where all of that is just sort of being like the seas have parted and, and the whole of reality has just sort of gone to the side for a minute. And and now we have to look at like what are our real needs, like not the artificial needs of reality that, that publish publicity tells us and the internet tells us like what are our actual needs like our actual physical bodily needs and what do the people around us need and what do what can we do like how can we interact in the environment in order to to live and thrive and take care of each other and 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 keep going essentially you know like how does it all work now so we're really in a it's such a privileged place we're in right now like it it couldn't have been more convenient the way it's all unfolded um but I think one of the really difficult things is, is for people to actually understand that this isn't a, a blip in the road. This is a real, like, this is a quantum shift. And we're part of it. Like, it's really up to us whether or not we take our sovereignty or now, now and, like, what we actually do with our bodies, what we do with our immune systems, what do we do with our minds, our emotions, our integrated individual systems, and what do we do as a whole? Like, how do we holistically integrate what is going on into our lives um, and I feel that I keep seeing the theme of sovereignty coming up and the corona meaning crown so like literally you couldn't get more symbolic like everything is so aligned just now you know everything's so completely symbolic and meaningful and I even get that kind of it's quite a like a deep cellular thrill and intense sensation kind of like we're, we're going off into it now. This is it where we start to, I have the sense of something, we're on the verge of symbiosis. Like we've been pretending we're separate from nature, pretending we're separate from life, pretending that we can avoid death or we can avoid being ill or we can avoid actually having a human body. <laughs> but now we're at like, we're like, it's like in your face, like now we're going to actually get back to real life. You know, we've been all like pretending that we're, you know, we can, create artificial aspects of everything but now we're like we're in it this is it so it's it's the most extraordinary opportunity and yet 
as the towers crumble, as the systems crum crumble and the hierarchies crumble in the medical system, which hasn't got a freaking clue what to do with this. You know, people are dying and the medical system, system isn't really helping them survive. And this is a classic pattern of, of pandemics, which is allopathic medicine cannot deal with pandemics. It doesn't know how to deal with it because it's something organic and natural and epic like the weather or like the shifting of plates on the earth's surface like tides and um this is really where where radical natural medicine really comes into its power but as as everything's crumbling and um, people are desperately clinging onto this tower and trying to put the bricks back in it and trying to say that this is what we should depend on when it's evident, evidently doesn't have a clue what it's doing and it isn't doing good it's just a fact and in the meantime it's trying to suppress a lot of you know like really obvious facts like homeopathy has been dealing with pandemics for at least two centuries and has amazing success like amazing success like huge percentages more than allopathic medicine but like people's posts are getting oh please excuse me my phone let me just switch that off um sorry it's actually off computer and um, it was actually on silence but somebody just called me excuse me um yeah so just that that was obviously needed to be a break from my very excited outpouring of um talk about this yeah it's an interesting time um yeah yeah and you were about to say something about um information about homeopathy being suppressed and if you've yeah. if listeners have studied holistic healing in any depth and studied the history of especially in the united states the mm. medical association and how it has suppressed midwifery homeopathy and herbalism as genuinely valid healing modalities at times of violence anything feminine basically and natural <laughs> and and things like um natural hygiene approaches where you're just looking at the food you eat how much sunshine you get and the air that you get and how much sleep you yes. get, just the natural ways that our body takes care of itself if given yes. everything that it needs um, those approaches have been very severely suppressed in favor by the american medical association over the course of history and yeah. in very nefarious ways oftentimes because of the financial uh, boon, financial motivation of having um, practices that cost more money, that yeah. are crisis oriented, and that yeah, yeah, absolutely. Create, they don't really create wellness. So focusing yeah. on surgery and drugs don't nourish yeah. wellness earlier on in the disease or illness process and it lets people wait until the crisis is upon them a health a severe health crisis is upon them where they require drugs and surgery and so the method of healing that focus on having people be well earlier on in the illness or yeah, process exactly. are suppressed because that takes business away from the drug peddling surgery but, promoting. but the thing that's so interesting about that too sorry to interrupt you there but i'm just i'm so excited to talk about this really specific point because somebody was commenting on on one of the alternative platforms that i'm on which is much more open-minded um, we were specifically discussing the, the issues with um, like constitutional legal oppression of homeopathic discipline and um, certification and so on. And we were talking about the historic um, incredible success of homeopathy. But then somebody was questioning that and saying um, about how they, Oh, but yeah, what about the proof? After I'd, I'd written a list, literally a list this big of all the proof over the, the various pandemics, the very high proof, you know, up to 60% more success rate. And the guy was questioning below, like, yeah, but what about the proof? And that's, a, that's in a really non-aggressive um, platform where people are very open to discussing this. But mm -hmm. I noticed on a, on a 
a much more aggressive platform like Facebook and Twitter. People are like so aggressively against you even discussing homeopathy. Like it's the mindset of humans which is very much linked to this whole corona situation, like psychosis of the, the fear panic pandemic. Like the whole nature of that fear is just closed to anything that isn't the system and isn't the rigidity of controlling things and that doesn't say nature is out there and it's something that can be controlled and it's something that we can put barriers between us and it and um, so it's really it, it's really um true that our systems are are like using their power uncreatively and unhelpfully but also it's because we ultimately believe in our pain and our illness and we're so focused on it like we've never seen it like this before in the whole world where everybody is literally immersed like they're not just immersed in it they're saturated right through the whole being it's in every minute of the day every and it's all people are talking about and it's just like <laughs> you know so the fact that they're so like completely saturated with it they can't even think for a minute that actually there's a freaking remedy for that you just take a freaking remedy and you can work through the symptoms and you don't have to die from it you know, and then there's the whole issue around just look after your immune system. Why are people not talking about, you know, I heard about two months of chat about COVID-19 before there were even any cases, particularly in the countries that I'm, I'm connected with. And all that time, not a single person talked about the immune system as in what do you do to support the immune system? And it just shows the depth to which then even thinking about the natural and natural solutions has been so like blinkered out, like it's literally blinkered out. Even this guy who was challenging me, I directed him to the post above that you've just read this post and responded to it. And there's a list that long of facts, details, references, links, and that's where the evidence is. After that, he responded to me, yeah, but where's the evidence of that? And I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't make it any simpler for you. I've posted it like 10 times and like, come on. But it's literally, you know, it's like such a blinkered, you know, people have got, they've been, they've been so, it's like people have been so conditioned into believing that birth is painful and it's a terrifying thing and that you need to intervene and it's better to cut a woman open. In the same way, we've been so conditioned to think that there isn't a simple solution. It, we have to give our, the power over our health to people in an agency and in an institution with a history of killing people. Um, you know, like with a history of like giving people medicine and stuff and interfering and stuff. But, the facts are there, like the difference between allopathic treatment of pandemics and homeopathic treatment is chalk and cheese. It's like night and day, it's completely opposite ends of the scale. And then um, nobody wants to know about that, or not enough people want to know about that. And hopefully, well, you know, in the meantime, it's to sort of protect itself. Yeah, I just want to address this uh, a little bit because yeah. um, it's easy to, for those of us, and, and there are. I just want to clarify that there are many people that are questioning that, that are yeah. trying to disseminate this information and there's yeah. more people and my feeling it is yes. that there's actually such a large number of people that are questioning that and coming to uh, ho more holistic approaches for themselves and creating holistic institutions across yeah. the around the world that that is why this is happening now because enough yes. are prepared to hold yes. the crumbling system wow yeah and I, I forgot to actually that's me being really focused on the problem there you know i was getting drawn into that whole yeah because i've got a real defensive thing about homeopathy i'm like don't diss homeopathy and, and because people so wholeheartedly dis dismiss it you right. know, literally use archaic language and stuff to dismiss it but of and course, it's so true that one of the reasons that um, Big Pharma is so unnerved just now, it's like they'll do anything to pull people back into the fold. And, and they're doing really well with that right now. You know, so many people are talking about the vaccine, the vaccine, we need the vaccine, you know, we've got to fix it with the vaccine. And um, not even talking about their immune systems. But I, sorry I, for interrupting again, but I, I really loved what you were saying there, Sam. Yeah, well, because I want to talk about that too. And you, you produced it that that the people that are most invested in sustaining this allopathic 
the separate from the body, separate, you know, the body being a mechanical thing, yeah. mechanical approach to healing, to medicine, the, mo the people who are most invested in that as this base of people are growing that are saying, you know what, we need to treat the whole person yeah. to come back together in unity with ourselves and with each other. And there's yeah. people growing into that. And that foundation is threatened. The, the, the suppressive um, impulses, the domination based impulses that are at the foundation of that allopathic method. It's all about dominating nature. Exactly, exactly. The body. Kill the disease. Being in control, right? And so that is at the foundation of that. And as people are stepping away from that and saying, what if there's a more powerful approach and more and more people, the, the, those dominators are going to try and dominate even stronger yeah. to get control yeah. of the situation even more. And so it's no surprise that we're seeing the kind of political things going on that we're seeing and where it's like, how could this, you know, we've come so far, we've made so much progress and, and you know, evolved so much to have a more holistic, progressive approach. I thought we were this close to creating a true democracy in the United yeah. States. And suddenly here we have, you know, I'm, I'm not saying me personally, but uh, but people in general who are so offended by our current leadership, but it makes perfect sense to me because if you look at the healing process exactly. in the holistic healing process is that just before you're about to get to the other side of the healing process, say for, for example, in a flu, yeah. right before the healing starts to complete itself is when you have the crisis of the most intense fever and the most intense symptoms. Yeah, exactly. And that's when you know, and it's like childbirth as well, just baby comes out is when you have the most intense sensations, when the baby's head goes through the cervix yeah. and it's yeah. in the vaginal canal, but the baby's not out yet. There's usually a pause in yeah. the most, it can be the most intensely powerful sensation uncomfortable for most women and that's usually when women in childbirth decide that they want the drugs or they want yeah. the or get this baby out of me now this is too much i'm gonna die right mm -hmm. good mid midwives will know because they can feel that the baby's headed out and it's just a matter of a few moments a few pushes mm -hmm. baby's gonna be coming mm -hmm. out. and so and, and so if we take womb wisdom and womb-centered awareness yeah. and apply it to what's happening in the world, we're just in transition. We're yeah, in the process of birthing a new society, a new way of being as human beings. Absolutely. Right at that portal between life yeah. and death. Yeah. And this virus. I mean, you can feel how I can really feel how a lot of the things I, I've been struggling with for some years are like trying to get into more being more aligned with gift with being more um working online so that I can have more freedom around my own schedule and so on uh freeing up time and energy and my own um you know like not having to work to somebody else's agenda uh, or work through an agency of any sort, like all that removing, you know, I always thought I was such a black sheep and it's such a problematic thing and sometimes I have very little money. But actually it's it's like led to this perfect line of, of training for moments like this and also realizing that so many people, this is like such a big, um, you know, it's such a big, <laughs> like they have no clue how to navigate it. They wouldn't even know what to do if they didn't have toilet roll, you know, it's like, it's like the biggest disaster in the world. Um, so I feel like there's, there's a real um, powerful moment, not for us to take advantage of in the conventional sense, but to easily like naturally move into, like that our wisdom is actually most useful as wisdom in the world just now, just like homeopathy is coming into its power. And all these things that I, I was like trying to force the world to get into gift culture and insisting that people should live in gift more. It's like it has to be that now because the, the, the economic structure just isn't there and it isn't backing itself up and it isn't supporting other people. So it's very interesting. Um, 
to be one of the ones who's got the answers just now. <laughs> and I, yeah, yeah. Where where it feels like, oh, this is what I was preparing for. These are this is why I was so passionate about a gifting economy. This is why I've yeah. to everybody about it now. And as people mm -hmm. coming up to the possibilities about that, they know to come to you to talk to you about it. Or they know to come to me because people are starting to realize, oh, we need to be generating new life. We need to be accessing that, that womb centered. They might not know it's the womb, but they are looking for yeah. something that accesses life generating powers within us and yeah, exactly. own inner wisdom and our find our own sovereignty and reconnect yeah. that because the systems that were holding us up are are crumbling. They're proving be not the thing that they promised to be They're themselves to be unsustainable as we all knew for so long well guess what like you said at the beginning unsustainable means it can't carry on it has comes it's to almost end. like you can feel it there's like a a, a a sense of it i can feel it like almost like a skin that the, the that we're sloughing like which, which was this like a temporary kind of skin and it might be the the outside of a chrysalis or something and we might be about to spring out as a butterfly but there's definitely something to do with sloughing some, something like letting go of some armor that we were wearing that we were sort of using to strive through life and um we're kind of in this state of vulnerability just now and i think a lot of us like i know that you too do a lot of work in gift and i'm, I'm really feeling a strong calling to like put my services out into the world no matter who needs it like those people are are like they're like little grubs, <laughs> like naked under the under the um, in the environment, you know, and they've got no idea how to protect themselves, and they have to get to this next stage. So, in a way, I guess we're we're going through a period of having to teach each other some practical skills, and also like how to work with the whole body system, like not just your brain telling you to push through and ride through and work really hard and you know hustle and <laughs> earn money. Um, you know, now we have to we have to just stop. You know, really stop doing that, which we all have stopped doing that. We really have to shift and look at, you know, look at what's around us, feel what's around us, be present in our own bodies. And this, this, um, like we're already immediately we're already in sovereignty because we're responsible for ourselves right now. <laughs> you know, the government might be giving us a wee handout here or. Somebody came around with some free masks for us, you know. But apart from that, you know, system, you know, if we get really, really sick, they'll cut us off into hospital before we die, and they'll put a ventilating machine on us. But the system doesn't have the answers just now, and it's it's doing its best with with what it's got, what what its understanding of the world is. But we need a whole different understanding of reality in order to to actually deal with this very easily and very efficiently. And we've never been in a a more genuinely beautifully potential time because we're all able to actually see space in front of us we're able to see what's happening in front of us um and we've got time on our hands and we've got the internet and we've got time to you know we're connected with people it's a time to build that build connection and build awareness about the bigger picture i think i think the biggest problem really is that people might not have had a bigger picture but part of that is having been in the grind for so long you know people are so just head down and work and, and pushing. So they've never really had maybe to really stop and take stock of what's happening in the whole world. Whereas right now we're, we're collectively doing that, even though a lot of us have been doing it for a long time and we're very aware that this kind of shit was going on for a long time. But yeah, so, so it's good to be one of the people who, who feels very able to support others in, in this moment of transition. So yeah, for us, it's not really, I don't really feel it's changed life has changed in any way shape or form apart from i've now got uses of the garden below my house which is fantastic um but a lot of people like yeah like they, they literally won't have any um they'll be locked in their house and that's it and they're just like trying to do their best to be a good citizen but they're not really able to beyond that they don't really know how to navigate it emotionally mentally and how to focus on their health you know when they're locked inside and so on so yeah yeah so I want to hear about um, your program that you've been creating since before this was going on. Your yeah. uh, healing and transformation and support program 
that uh, to help with this that that you knew you needed to create, but you didn't know why, right? <laughs> and yeah, absolutely. Here we are. And, Go ahead. Yeah, and there's been this. It's really interesting. Like the shift literally happened at the start of this, just before it started to come into the media about the coronavirus. Something about really immersing myself in the path of gifts and really immersing myself in that I was already on it but like actually committing to it with my whole energy not just with part of my mind and then carrying on in the ground and another part of my mind like actually getting into the pleasurable flow of it and um, so I've been doing various I've done an online art school and I've been creating a mentoring program and I'm creating um, a, a, a course called the low income millionaire which is all about like super thriving on very little, conventionally very little, but how to actually interact in the world and find what you need and fix things and uh, source things and, and help other people and be connected and all that kind of stuff, work online, create passive incomes and so on. So I've got that whole course there. But because I was thinking in a less connected way, um, I was always thinking like, how do you commodify that and then put it out in the world? I had such a big, <laughs> like really like boom, um, enlightenment moment recently where I was just called to like I can just feel that I have to offer this work to the world and even if people can't afford to pay for it um, if someone has a need I just want to answer that and they can they can support me through my patreon and get access to it that way but I also want to do this one-on-one -on -one work and just support people in in making this transition and not being in the fear about it you know like in the birth process not being stuck in the fear tension pain cycle where the self-fulfilling prophecy of a problematic birth or, or dangerous things transpiring instead going into the the orgasmic joyful expansive dynamic which we all have the option at all times to go into this and i really feel like collectively and as a planet we're trying to move into a more expansive phase but those of us who are like clinging on to the old system and the pain and the solitude like it, it really needs a lot of us to really give all we've got into this space to help us move into the more expansive space, you know, to like stretch our wings out and fight out of the chrysalis and all that kind of stuff. So right. yeah, I'm really excited to be shifting into this more. I'm still using the Patreon platform, which I really love, and people can sign up for as little as a dollar a month, a month, so most people can afford that, but I'm also working out with that, but most people are joining me through Patreon and um, connecting to my courses and mentoring work there but yeah I'm also open to within the boundaries of my own well-being and energy um, I'm really happy to support people who literally have nothing and who need the support so yeah I'm really excited about the work I'm doing I've got some amazing clients just now and really love going through it with them you know just helping them like see that they're in this moment too like actually they're in, in the mo they're in the moment actually equipped for what they have to do they they're just it's just the sort of the the mind clouding that society tells us that we have to hustle and we have to push we have to be very masculine very penetrating and very striving but but really we're i think we're all ready for for this now i really do feel like we're all ready for it so yeah beautiful yeah and and you're ready and as the listeners know i've been preparing for this for a while with creating the wound. Mm -hmm healing temple and the um, this offerings there there's a i remodeled the membership site at the womb centered healing temple off of patreon uh due to some comments you and i had claire about uh we create yeah. patreon right where yeah, aspects of patreon that you were questioning at the beginning and so you know model that to be able to offer my services uh, in, in in a gifting way in an accessible way, um, as well as make an income for myself and um, thrive without having to be greedy about how much money I want to make I much prefer making the relationships and uh, working collectively to, and cooperatively and collaboratively towards these mm. healing processes together with these healing processes of in the world and where the focus isn't about on how much money we're making but the focus is on how are we coming together to support each other through this time so i so appreciate the, you the, sharing. The, the currency like currency is shifting just now like fiat money is just not as useful as it used to be 
and it's becoming less and less useful and the, the real currency is our connection and the power of how we use our power together and that's the you know the transition of currency just now is really vital that we really understand what's happening that we're not terrified of it that we embrace it and we start working with it and start connecting with each other and creating clusters and groups for things that we need and so on and for support and so on so yeah amazing transition time indeed well thank you so much for joining us on the on the podcast here claire and sharing your beautiful insights and your inspiration yeah. and your vitality is so palpable mm -hmm. here as you share mm -hmm. your passion and your excitement mm -hmm. um, and so uh, people can reach you on where's the best place for people to find you and get connected you can find me on clairegalloway.com or on patreon forward slash patreon.com forward slash claire galloway and it's e-l-a-r-e -E, and the irish spelling rather than the french spelling with an i no i okay. so <laughs> c-l-a-r-e is claire galloway and galloway has mm -hmm. holes in it too g-a-l-l-o-w-a-y correct Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. And those of you uh, listeners who want to get in touch with the Womb Centered Healing Temple, you can go to wombcenteredhealing.com and find out what's going on there as well. So, a lot and many blessings. May we all uh, find our butterfly wings emerging out of the green goo that we're swimming around in. <laughs> and may mm. our imaginal cells, we are. Mm cells imagining the colors of our butterfly wings all right mm -hmm. um that's all for now until next time mm -hmm.